The uneven recovery continues. Is this the K-shaped economy? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I'd like to look at a media release from the CBA discussing spending intentions. Now they've highlighted it as an uneven recovery. Now a lot of the media talk was about a V-shaped recovery that the economy is going to bounce back, a sharp drop and a sharp return. But more and more I'm thinking we're going to start seeing a K-shaped recovery where you've got some people who are bouncing back, some people who are probably not even affected, but others who are going to hit rock bottom. I mean, just have a look at, well, the class divide. More and more money is being thrown at property. Those already in the game, I think, will have an advantage in some areas and some cities. Those who have been locked out, maybe they're struggling to get into the property game. Maybe they're working in industries that are being, un well, unfairly restricted compared to other industries. This is definitely something we have to keep an eye out, particularly with the increase in jobless families that are going on. You've got unemployment now at 6.9%. You've got un underemployment going up. So, I mean, it, it's just, there's a lot of people, I suspect, are not even feeling any impact of the beginning of this recession. CBA's chief economist, Stephen Halmerick, confirms spending intentions largely tracked sideways in September while expecting future improvements. The latest data from the Commonwealth Bank Household Spending Intentions series shows spending patterns across key sectors of the economy largely tracked sideways in September, with economist Stephen Halmerick saying some improvements could be expected over the remainder of 2020 and into 2021 given the extent of the fiscal and monetary policy support being applied to the economy. So he's hoping for improvement or expecting improvement in spending intentions because of the support that's being provided by the government, one way or another, and monetary policy, which is resulting in such low, such a low cash rate at, I'll bring it up, 0.25. I actually had a a marketing call, a guy trying to, you know, oh, because the, the cash rate has been lowered. Interest rates have been lowered. You may be not getting the best deal on your mortgage. He's, he's trying to get me to um, to either switch mortgages or something. So I was I was jumping on. I'm going, what? The ca interest rates lowered? I haven't heard that. that. I need to make a video. That That's breaking news. And I go, no, mate, it's still at 0.25. What are you talking about? And and he hung up on me. <laughs> it's disappointed. I thought that could be an exciting video to do. If they cut rates already, although it's suspected. So Mr. Humrick said, the Commonwealth Bank Household Spending Intentions Series data to end of September 2020 shows that spending intentions largely tracked sideways in September, as the impact of the Victorian Stage 4 shutdowns remain evident. Both home buying and motor vehicle spending intentions softened a little during September, while those for retail, travel, health and fitness, entertainment and education tracked sideways. Spending intentions were mixed across different categories with the HSI measures and Mr. Hamrick, uh, Mr. Holmerick says an uneven recovery is now underway in the economy. Notwithstanding the developments in September, spending intentions should be supported by the easing of COVID-19 restrictions in the month ahead and the significant fiscal policy stimulus detailed in the 2020-21 Commonwealth budget that will support household income and employment as well as business cash flow and investment. Well, we also saw yesterday, we also saw, I'll just bring up this image here the well the past year late payments in different in industries are increasing it's getting worse it's getting worse not better and that that has a flow on effect if someone's 90 days past due on an invoice well yes you're, you're going to tighten your belt and remember we've got trading while insolvent as well so this could all fall over in a heap in january when people start chasing these businesses insolvencies are down at the moment Business defaults are up. So all of these things need to be taken into account. He forecasts that after contracting by an estimated 3.3% in 2020, the Australian economy will grow by 2.5% in 2021. He also says that it now looks like the unemployment rate has peaked at 7.5% in July, while progressive 
While progress from here on the unemployment rate will slow, this is a better outcome than previously expected. Well, you may see well, the unemployment rate now is at 6.9%. You may see it jump up again, even if the economy improves because more people will enter the workforce again. And this is from the ABS, ABS data. You look at Roy Morgan, you roll a thumb, double it. Double it to get the actual unemployment rate. I don't know about you, but one hour during the survey period isn't enough work for me. It's just not, not enough to, you know, to support my family. I wish it was. It'd be great. It'd be great. Probably all those, there's another, uh, another warning from CBA about all the online scammers now that are coming around. You know, all trying to hit people coming from home. That, that's a big, another big risk. Maybe that's, that's how you do the one hour work a week. So the HSI series offers a forward looking view by analyzing actual customer behavior from CBA's transaction data, along with household search activity from Google Trends. This combination adds to insights on prospective household spending trends in the Australian economy. So home buying, spending intentions are down. Retail, flat. Motor vehicle down. Entertainment flat, travel flat, education flat, health and fitness flat. Each month, analysis by CBA's global economic and market research team provides an early indication of spending trends across seven key household sectors in Australia. In addition to home buying, the series covers around 55% of Australia's total consumer spending across retail, travel, education, entertainment, motor vehicles, and health and fitness. So retail spending intentions. The intentions largely track sideways in September, coming off highs seen pre-Melbourne shutdown in July. Retail spending intentions were, however, mixed across different categories during September. Gains were seen in spending in department stores, grocery stores, furniture and household equipment and appliances, paint and hardware stores, school and office supplies. So people are working on their homes. People are setting up their home offices. People are probably having to buy a whole lot of school stuff. People are in you know, grocery stores. They're buying cheaper food. Weakness in September was most evident in spending intentions in duty-free stores, men's clothing, shoe stores, beauty and barber shops. Well, duty-free is just gonna get, well, like, you know, it's, it's always gonna be terrible now with our tourism industry essentially shut down. I mean, does any anyone else go to duty-free other than tourists? Let, let me know in the comments, guys, because I think I walked through one once down in, in Surface when I was working there as a teenager, but that's pretty much it. Whilst accounting for a small share of overall spending, Outsized gains continue to be seen in spending intentions on arts and crafts, supplies, apps, electronic stores, hobby, toys, and game stores, and record stores. We still have record stores? So travel spending intentions. After bouncing sharply off their low in April in recent months, travel spending intentions track sideways in September. In the month ongoing, recovery was seen in visits to aquariums, camper and recreation vehicle dealers and trailer parks campgrounds weakness remains evidence evident in key areas such as airlines hotels motels and resorts motorhomes and recreational vehicle hire sports and rec camps cruise lines timeshare tourist attractions travel agents car rentals and bus lines home buying spending intentions home buying spending intentions were marginally lower in september continuing the small decline evident in august there you go. We can see it. See it here. Although the number of home loan applicants, or applications seen in September 20 were higher than September last year, there's been a decrease on the month. In addition, Google search declined marginally in September, as they had the previous month. But the RBA's substantial easing of monetary policy has seen mortgage rates fall to multi-generational lows, and we expect these low rates to continue to provide support to home buying. We expect house prices to show a peak to trough decline of negative 6%, but with substantial deviation expected across the capital cities. Well, and there's talk, there's another article about a 20% increase in Brisbane. 20% property increase in Brisbane, which compared to the RBA modeling 40% decreases, it's just nuts. And if we have a look here at the, the median value in Brisbane, what's that? We're sitting at 500, so 20% increase lift the median up to 600. So education spending intentions. Education spending intentions moderated a little in September with both the value of transactions and the number of Google searches down. 
Over the year to September, both the number and value of total education spending is down, but the number down more than the value. Year to September, softness remains evident in both the number and value of transactions for spending on business and secretarial schools and trade and vocational colleges. While the number of spending transactions on colleges and universities is down, the value of these transactions is up a little. So entertainment spending intentions. Whilst well up from their low in April, entertainment spending intentions were also a little changed in September. Spending intentions were led lower in September by declines in drinking out, art galleries, dance halls, movie theaters, and live performance theaters and ticket sales. Some strength in September was seen in off-premises alcohol sales. Fast food and confectionery sales, bowling alleys, pay TV, digital books, movies, games, music, and video games. Motor vehicle spending intentions. And we've seen car sales. Car sales, do I have the data here? I mean, it's just been going down. I've got to update this, but look at that from the last three years, everyone. Motor vehicle spending intentions lost momentum again in September, coming back off their COVID-19 highs seen in June. While both the number of personal loan applications and value of motor vehicle transactions increased marginally in September, the number of Google searches was down on the month. A less weak outlook for residential property prices should help the outlook for the motor vehicle sector. Generally speaking, spending on motor vehicles has the highest response to changes in property prices, according to research done by the Reserve Bank of Australia. Health, fitness spending intentions. Health and fitness spending intentions also tracked largely sideways in September and are now well off their highs seen early in the COVID-19 period. Within the health and fitness sector, spending intentions are mixed across the different categories. Improvement can be seen in spending intentions on chiropractors, dentists, optometrists, and podiatrists. Large increases in spending intentions can also continue to be seen in bicycle shops, sales and services, golf courses, and sports good accessories. So note for editors, uh, the HSI House Household Spending Intention Series offers a forward-looking view by analyzing actual customer behavior from CBA's transaction data, along with household search activities from Google Trends. So what do you all think, everyone? What do you all think? Because we we need to keep an eye on all of this. We need to keep an eye on all of this. You know, retail spending intentions. They've you know shot up, crashed down a little bit up, and they've smoothed it out in the data. But you know, with most things staying flat, houses and vehicles going down, with all the stimulus that's going into housing. Are we going to see a K-shaped recovery, guys? What do you think? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content that's created here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and watch those spending intentions. Bye for now.